This is a version of a poem that was found in a 10th century manuscript uh, called the Exeter Book. It is called The Wanderer. Often the wanderer pleads for pity and mercy from the Lord, but for a long time, sad in mind, he must dip his oars into icy waters, the lanes of the sea. He must follow the paths of exile. Fate is inflexible. Mindful of hardships, grievous slaughter, the ruin of kinsmen, the wanderer said, Time and again, at the day's dawning, I must mourn all my afflictions alone. There is no one still living to whom I dare open the doors of my heart. I have no doubt that it is a noble habit for a man to bind fast all of his heart's feelings, guard his thoughts, whatever is his being. The weary in spirit cannot withstand fate, and nothing comes of venting spleen. Wherefore, those eager for glory often hold some ache imprisoned in their hearts. This I had to bind my feelings and fetters, often sat at heart, cut off from my country, far from my kinsmen. After, long ago, dark clouds of earth covered my gold friend. I left that place in wretchedness, plowed the icy waves with winter in my heart. In sadness, I sought far and wide for a treasure giver, for a man who would welcome me into his meat hall. And give me good cheer, for I boasted no friend. Entertain me with delights. He who has experienced it knows how cruel a comrade's sorrow can be to any man who has few loyal friends. For him are the ways of exile in no wise twisted of gold. For him a frozen body in no wise the fruits of the earth. He remembers hall retainers and treasure and how in his youth his gold friend entertained him. Those joys have all vanished. A man who lacks advice for a long while from his loved lord understands this that when sorrow and sleep together hold the wretched wanderer in their grip, it seems he clasps and kisses his Lord and lays hands and head upon the Lord's knee as he had sometimes done when he enjoyed the gift drawn in his earlier days. Then the friendless man wakes again and sees the dark waves surging around him, the seabirds bathing, spreading their feathers, frost and, no frost and snow failing, mingled with hail. Then his wounds lay more heavy on his heart, aching for his Lord. His sorrow is renewed. The memory of kinsmen sweeps through his mind. Joyfully, he remembers them, eagerly scans his comrade warriors. Then they swim away again. Their drifting spirits do not bring many old songs to his lips. Sorrow upon sorrow attend the man who must send time and time again his weary heart over the frozen waves. And this I cannot think why in the world my mind does not darken when I brood on the fate of brave warriors, how they have suddenly had to leave the mead hall of the bold followers. So this world dwindles day by day and passes away, for a man will not be wise before he has weathered his share of winters in the world. A wise man must be patient, neither too passionate nor too hasty of speech, neither too irresolute or too, too rash in battle, not too anxious, too content, nor too grasping, and never too eager to boast before he knows himself. When he boasts a man, when he boasts, a man must bide his time until he has no doubt in his brave heart that he has fully made up his mind. A wise man must fathom how eerie it will be when the riches of this world stand waste, and now in diverse places in this middle earth wall stand, tugged at by wind and hung with hoar frost, buildings and decay. The wine halls crumble, lords lie dead, deprived of joy. All the proud followers have fallen by the wall. Battle carried off some, led them on journeys. The bird carried one over the welling waters. One, the gray wolf devoured. A warrior with downcast face hid one in an earth cave. Thus the maker of men laid this world waste until the ancient works of the giants stood idle, hushed without the hubbub of inhabitants. Then he who has brooded over these noble ruins and who deeply ponders this dark light, wise in his mind, often remembers the many slaughters of the past and speaks those words. Where has the horse gone? Where the man? Where the giver of gold? Where is the feasting place and where are the pleasures of the hall? I mourn the gleaming cup, the warrior in his corslet, the glory of the prince, how that time has passed away, darkened under the shadow of night as it is as if it had never been. Where the lover warriors were, now stands a wall of wondrous height, carved with serpent forms. The savage, 
the savage ash appears, avid for slaughter, have claimed all the warriors a glorious fate. Storms crash against these rocky slopes, sleet and snow fall and fetter the world. Winter howls, the darkness draws on, the night shadow casts gloom and brings fierce hailstorms upon the north to frighten men. Nothing is ever <coughs> easy in the kingdom of earth. The world beneath the heavens and the land in the hands of fate. Here possessions are fleeting. Here friends are fleeting. Here man is fleeting. Here kinsman is fleeting. The whole world has become a wilderness. So spoke the wise man in his heart as he sat apart in thought. Brave is the man who holds to his beliefs, nor shall he ever show him the sorrow in his heart before he knows how he can hope to heal it. It is best for a man to seek mercy and comfort from the Father in heaven for security from standing aside.